Hi everyone, uh, welcome to my presentation about OSC. My name is Daniel Mach and I work for SUSE. A uh, couple of words about me first. So I joined SUSE about 18 months ago. Uh, I spent 15 years at Red Hat, uh, first as a release engineer for the first decade. And then I moved to the software management team as a DNF uh, team leader. Uh, I designed DNF5 package manager and I unfortunately know something about modularity. Uh, now I work as the build service engineer and I'm a top contributor to OSC these days. So if you have any issues with OSC, talk to me, please. Uh, we are going to talk about OSC in general, uh, then uh, the latest changes in the current version. I'll give you several tips and tricks so you feel uh, that you have learned something from this presentation. And then I will cover also some plans about the upcoming version of OSC. So let me remind you that OSC is not an OpenSUSE conference. In this case, it's uh, OpenSUSE Commander, which is the command line tool uh, used for uh, accessing the build service. And it is extensible with plugins. And last but not least, it is a Python library. So what is new in OSC 1.0? So we dropped Python to support, surprisingly. Who would need that these days? And we support only Python 3, 6, and newer. But if you need an older version of Python uh, and OSC working together, then there's still uh, the 0.x main branch with the old version of OSC that still supports Python 2. So uh, feel free to use that. And I'm also backporting some changes there from time to time. So you may even get some bug fixes and features. The next thing we did was a code cleanup. So the code looks a bit better than before. It's trying to follow PEP8, but not completely yet. We are still working on it. It's an ongoing process. And it was more important not to break the project. Uh, so we, we have prioritized that over, uh, over the code niceness. And I have also fixed all the pylint errors, so we can run a pylint on the pull requests. And if there's an error, it's not get uh, lost among the other errors. About testing, yep. There's quite a lot of news about testing. Uh, unit tests uh, were there already. Uh, but there are also new sanity tests uh, to check your coding style. and. Also, uh, we are building um, the project using uh, RPM build, pip, and everything else uh, in, in the GitHub Actions. So you get immediate uh, uh, feedback on your pull request as well. And also, I've uh, put together uh, behave tests that actually use a special uh, pre-built OBS container. And they test. Uh, OSC without mocking anything. Basically, it just runs OSC uh, from, from Git and uh, tests how it works in real life. So um, if this is proven to be working, uh, there's a high chance that it's going to be working for you after you install it as well. Obviously, the test coverage is not that great, and we are still working on it. The, another. A nice feature is SSH authentication. So it's supported now. Uh, you need to enable it on the server, obviously. And um, unfortunately, there are still some hiccups. Uh, currently, there are some auto detection, which is working with just a single key, uh, which is not ideal. Uh, or you can provide an explicit path to a file, which is also not that great, especially when you uh, use um, SSH uh, agent or uh, have your keys in the, uh, in the GPG key ring. And it also doesn't work uh, with um, SSH agent for warding. So what I was thinking about uh, is to detect the right key, basically try to authenticate several times. And if one key works, then just remember it in OSC, uh, in OSC RC for the next uh, next OSC runs. 
there were also some improvements in how OSC handles connections. Uh, we have replaced uh, the old code with URLab3 that uh, offers connection pooling, which is really nice. So when you run OSC checkout or any any uh, command that makes uh, several consequent uh, connections to the server, it is way faster than before. And ob obviously it comes also with better proxy support. So um, basically URLab3 is currently handling nearly everything we need. And along the way, uh, we have got rid of M2 crypto and replaced it with cryptography, which seemed to be also a good idea because M2 crypto wasn't working for a while. Like in, in Fedora, I know that it was stuck on uh, not being able to compile against uh, uh, OpenSSL version 3. So uh, cryptography doesn't suffer, suffer from these issues. Command line improvements, uh, cmdln.py was something we have found on the internet in the past and bundled to OSC. Uh, now it has been replaced with a custom code, which is way uh, easier uh, to manage. And it is also using arc parts rather than the um, deprecated uh, option uh, parser. And the other uh, change related to the command line is uh, a new classes uh, that wrap uh, the commands. The advantage is that we can finally split the huge uh, command line.py into smaller chunks. And then we can also um, uh, manage like parent-child relationships uh, among these classes. So we can basically build a command tree quite easily. So we, we uh, OSC commands can have subcommands now uh, without any, any special hex. And we are getting to the tips and tricks. I'll start with something I've learned quite recently, and I found it super useful. Uh, so if you if you have an installed package on your system and you want to see uh, its sources. Uh, you use RPM uh, with dash dash QF, that stands for query format, and display the dist URL uh, field uh, from the package. And that, that prints uh, that OBS colon slash slash thing, that, that dist URL. And when you just paste it to the OSC checkout command, uh, it's going to check out the exactly version of the package, like sources for the, for the package that is installed on your system. So in case you need to be troubleshooting something, this is a way to go. Uh, I have also learned that uh, some people uh, have too many declined requests when they run OSC request list. And that is because uh, the declined requests are actually considered actionable. Uh, you should either revoke the request so it uh, gets dropped completely, or you should supersede the request with something else. So please keep in mind that declined requests actually need your action. Uh, there's also one new thing in the uh, new feature in the uh, OSC one. Uh, that's the magical dot character. It's like a wildcard, and if you if you use it. Um, it expands uh, to either the project or the package from the current working copy, uh, basically based on uh, based on the position of the argument. So, uh, as the example shows, uh, either OSE lock dot uh, expects a project, so basically the dot expands to the current project uh, related to the working copy, and OSC tries to lock that uh, project. Or if you uh, do dot space dot or dot slash dot, uh, then uh, you're about to lock uh, a package that corresponds uh, with the working copy. And then also something I have uh, bumped into recently because I needed this. Uh, when you build something locally and it fails, uh, there's an option to uh, get into the shell uh, after the failed build, so you can easily check what's, what went wrong, uh, eventually 
try to resume the build and see what can uh, can be fixed uh, in the next run. And there seem to be another uh, option how to do it, basically modify OSCRC and put there the following build dash shell dash after dash fail equals one option. But to be honest with you, I haven't tested this. I, I just tested the first one. This is extracted from the sources. And another cool thing I have learned about OSC, I, I used to use um, various services to download uh, Git sources and then uh, pack those into a tarball, which was uh, not that nice. And I realized that when I do an upstream release and then I just need to download the tarball, um, these two lines in the service file are enough for me. So basically what I do is, uh, I uh, modify the version in the spec file, uh, then run OSC service manual run, and that modifies uh, versions in other places in the project, and also downloads the new tarball from upstream. And then, obviously, uh, we need to add remove tarballs, and it's it's business as usual, you know. <laughs> And I'm slowly getting to what's next. So this is where the presentation becomes interesting for those who know something about OSC internals, or uh, for those who have tried to use OSC as a Python library. Uh, so I'll start slowly with some minor changes. So first of all, I would like to build OSC for all available Pythons in the distribution. Currently, it's just Python 3 without any version, so basically the default Python, but uh, since OSC is a library, it should work for all available Pythons, ideally. And that also includes supporting virtual environments and maybe even b do better sub-packaging because uh, why would you need to um, install all the dependencies when you just need the part that contacts the OBS API but you're not interested in building, for instance. Uh, about config parser, uh, you may have noticed that uh, OSC has a custom config parser uh, because the Python uh, the, uh, standard library doesn't offer a config parser that uh, preserves comments on writing. So, uh, and obviously, this, this is this is highly needed. Uh, first of all, because we have a template, basically, uh, with commented uh, commented commands or <coughs> commented options uh, in in the uh, OSCRC. So uh, we need to somehow uh, preserve the comments. But how to do it? We still do not know. We we are considering to moving to another INI parser library or simply. Uh, moving to Toml or something else that might make sense, but this is this is the future, we, uh, and it's it's probably not that critical. So maybe we will get to that anytime later. What is more interesting is our complete, uh, because the completion files are uh, put together by hand. So anytime uh, we add a new command or make changes, we need to uh, update the completion files, which is not happening. So uh, we were thinking about using the rcomplete package uh, to generate the completion rules automatically, which might, would be really nice. Unfortunately, there are some challenges because some people want to separate uh, package and project arguments with a space. Some people want um, a forward slash. And it seems that our complete would prefer having just one of those to make things simple. So we, uh, we need to find an answer for this. If you have any ideas, please let us know. And now this is starting to be really, really <laughs> uh, interesting and maybe a little bit controversial because uh, if you work with OSC internally, you need to touch XML a lot because XML is what you get from the OBS interfaces. Uh, so we think that we should hide 
the XML from the API users and even from the uh, contributors and uh, touch uh, XML only uh, when working on the uh, on the uh, basically wrappers that uh, provide the XML functionality to the users. So I was thinking about um, using the existing OBS Relax NG schemas that describe uh, the XML uh, that is being sent back and forth and basically generate Python classes for those that would manipulate the uh, XML under the hood. Let me show you an example how it looks like now. So first of all you need to call a function for instance to show metadata about a package that uh, ends up as a list of bytes. So you need to uh, join all those bytes into a single uh, single variable, single bytes array. And then, uh, which is confusing, uh, you need to call, it element, call elementary from string, but you are reading from bytes, obviously. And then you are looking for individual uh, nodes and setting the text, and if, if the node is not, uh, not there, you need to create it first. Which is probably okay to do just once, but if any, any uh, OSC contributor should deal with this, we should find a better way. So I was basically thinking about creating a nice wrapper that would pull uh, the XML from the API based on some arguments and then manipulate with the individual fields as attributes or properties basically. There are some challenges, uh, especially when uh, the XML uh, structure is complex, but I think it's just a code, we can somehow make it work. And the same actually applies to XPath. If you make any query to, uh, to the uh, server, uh, you need to build an XPath, and to be honest, I am not enjoying that so much. Uh, because uh, it includes uh, concatenating strings and dealing with uh, the parentheses and basically doing everything right and knowing what you do. So there's another idea we have about how to improve this. Uh, some of you may know or may think that uh, where this is heading because the previous example was quite close to how uh, uh, Django framework is working uh, with uh, the OR, ORM um, uh, thing. So basically uh, map something to the objects. So I basically stole one of their ideas. Uh, so this, this probably shouldn't be necessary anymore, which is quite complex. And this looks nice, but it usually looks uglier directly in the code. So I would like to replace it with something like this, some, some magic uh, arguments you just pass to a search function or something and uh, the keywords uh, after uh, the double, score, uh, double scores get automatically um, translated to some actions or something. So like in this case, um, this, this is basically the, exactly the same you've, we've seen on the previous slide, but it's probably easy to digest for ordinary people. And that was quite quick, so that's nearly all. But before we finish and before we do the questions and answers, I need to call for help. Because it seems that quite a lot of people duplicate OSC code, which is something I don't like. We should rather contribute in one place. So if you know about any code that should belong to OSC, please file an issue, let me know, and we can make it part of OSC and make it available for everyone. Or if you, if you, if you have any code that work around any OSC issues, uh, the same applies. Please file an issue and we will fix it directly in the code. If you know how and if, you're, if you want to contribute by covering your test cases to make sure that nothing breaks for you, please 
write, behave tests, and contribute those uh, back to OSC. If, if you need any help with that, again, you can always contact me, and I will, I will help you with that. And last but not least, if you have a project that relies on OSC, but you feel that OSC breaks it too often, uh, point me to your tests. And if, if they are capable of running on GitHub, I will just run them during the pull requests. And if something fails, we will, we will know before pushing um, broken code to master. And yep, that's pretty much it. So thank you. And if you have any questions, please ask. Just a complete drive-by question. Um, why arc complete and not click? Because I know that a lot of people are using click and it seems to be very common now. Uh, thanks for mentioning that. I'll take a look. Uh, basically, I, I just wanted to stick with uh, the standard libraries as, as much as possible. Uh, so maybe that, that's why. But you, you made a good point that we may take a look at click and eventually just use it. But usually people um, tend to keep the dependencies minimal. Um, when I was working with some contributors in the past, they were really making clear that they want to do quite a lot of coding <laughs> to avoid pulling an, an additional dependency. You have already, you already have uh, dependencies. So. Sure. Right, any other questions? <laughs> Maybe kind of a strange question, um, but uh, I'd like to know if you are planning to support uh, Windows with OSC. Uh, I have an answer for you, no. Uh, we have dropped the Windows support, mainly because nobody is using it and it was utterly broken. But if uh, you're willing to contribute and help us with uh, putting some tests together to make sure that um, it's not breaking on Windows, we can eventually get the support back. So I, I don't have an immediate need for it, but um, if you're looking at uh, typical development environments, you often have mm -hmm. those on Windows, and if I have some, some development environment that integrates with OSC or with mm -hmm. build service, that would be something that... I'm, I'm not kind sure. of nice. Yeah, I'm not sure if I recall correctly, but uh, one of the problems was that uh, basically in, in the OBS ecosystem, uh, there's the colon separator that is not working well on Windows because it has a special meaning, and I think it's one of the forbidden characters in the file names. So that, that opens quite a lot of new challenges. Actually, my experience is quite contrary with uh, WSL, I uh, see that a lot of people stop using Windows as Windows and develop with uh, uh, WSL. And I guess if you are developing for a Linux distribution, which in the end that's what uh, OSC is about, mm -hmm. then I can expect you to run. We have beautiful open source images for WSL. <laughs> Um, sure, but as I said, uh, we need an active uh, community for that first, because I'm not just going to fi uh, fix it just in case someone would use it in the future. All right, if there's no other question, uh, thank you. And if you have any questions you want to ask me in private, feel free to catch me after the talk. So thanks.